and welcome to Mrs E English Skills. I'm Mrs E and today we're looking at AQA GCSE English Language Paper 2, Question 5, Maintaining Engagement. In this session we will look at strategies to improve engagement. This means making our readers want to carry on reading until the end. If you achieve this, then you will likely get a good grade for this question. First, let's consider word choice. How broad is your vocabulary? Vocabulary is the word you choose to include in your writing. The broader, the better. In the exam, you need to show off your word knowledge and your ability to choose the most appropriate and effective words. So how can you broaden your word knowledge? In order to do this, you need to look for synonyms. But what are they and where can you find them? A synonym is a word or phrase that means exactly or nearly the same as another word or phrase in the same language. For example, short is a synonym of close. We find synonyms in a thesaurus. It looks just like a dictionary, but rather than definitions, it contains synonyms of each word. Why is it useful to know a variety of ways of saying the same or similar thing? Let's think about this while considering an exam question. Imagine you're asked to write an article in support of a more plant-based diet. You could write, eating a more plant-based diet is good for your health and is also good for the environment. Or, consuming a more plant-based diet is beneficial for your health and is also favourable for the environment. Which do you think would get better marks for vocabulary? Rather than repeating the word good, which doesn't show off my knowledge of the English language, I have chosen to use the synonyms beneficial and favourable of good in order to create a more precise and more engaging piece of text. This is why it's good to have a broad vocabulary. Let's look at another example. Imagine you are writing a speech to convince others to recycle. You could write, a lack of recycling is bad for our environment and will result in a bad world for future generations to come. Or, a lack of recycling is detrimental to our environment and will result in an insufferable world for future generations to come. Which has more impact? When we've used the synonyms of bad, rather than just repeating the word bad, detrimental and insufferable, not only is it more engaging, but it's more precise and it has more emotive appeal. And this may convince your readers. With this in mind, let's have a look at adapting your vocabulary for emotive effect. As when your reader is emotionally invested in your writing, they are more likely to keep reading. Let's look at an example. Animals in laboratories are often treated really badly and then put to sleep. Does this have the impact that the author intended? Can we adapt the vocabulary to make it more emotionally effective? Pause the video here to have a go before I reveal my answer. So I would change it to Animals in laboratories are tortured over and over again and then mercilessly murdered. You can see it still says the same thing, but it says it in a more impactful way. 
Tortured, the verb tortured, is something more horrific than just treated badly. And the alliteration on mercilessly murdered enhances and emphasises the idea that they are killed brutally rather than just put to sleep. This might make my reader take action against the people in the laboratories that are doing this. For my final point, let's lighten the mood a little bit by adding humour. Humour is an effective tool to aid engagement. Laughing is a feel-good emotion and if you're reading something that makes you feel good, you will likely keep reading. There are many ways you can add humour to your writing. Can you think of any? In this session, I'm just going to look at two. Irony and sarcasm. But what are they? What's the difference between them? Irony is saying the opposite of what you mean in order to make someone laugh or make light of a situation. For example, it was pouring with rain. Perfect weather for a barbecue. Rain might ruin your barbecue, but here the author is trying to make light of the fact that it's rained when they planned to have this barbecue. Sarcasm's different. It's nastier than irony. So an example would be, the food took 90 minutes to arrive, which is just brilliant. I can think of no better way to spend a Saturday evening than waiting around for a plate of mediocre mush. Here the author is trying to make fun of the restaurant where they've gone to to have a meal. They're not happy with the service, the fact it took so long, so they're saying the opposite of what they think in order to cause offence. Both are effective if used appropriately. In order to help you out and make sure that you fully understand the difference between irony and sarcasm, let's look at some examples. Let's play a game of irony or sarcasm. Look at the following pieces of text. Can you identify irony or sarcasm? I'm made up that I must work over Christmas. My boss is so kind, allowing me to edit spreadsheets for three days rather than indulge in food and festivities with my loving family. I think he should be up for manager of the year. Jessica readjusted her lounger to follow the setting sun, thinking of all the poor souls still trapped in the office. She'd been asked to travel to Dubai for work. Stay hunched over her cramped, cluttered desk in Slough, or work in this paradise. A very difficult decision indeed. As the waiter brought over her third cocktail of the day, she thought of dreary, cloudy slough. It's a tough job, she thought to herself, but somebody's got to do it. Pause the video here to pick whether you think they are irony, sarcasm or one of each. Have you worked them out? Number one is sarcasm. It's having a dig at her manager for making her work over the Christmas period. But number two is not really having a dig at anyone. It's sort of light-hearted humour for the fact that this person is allowed to work in such a wonderful environment. So that's irony rather than sarcasm. How did you do? Thank you for watching. Hopefully this video has given you some good tips and tricks in order to help you get the most marks possible for paper 2 question 5. Don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tricks to ensure you achieve the highest marks possible in your English exams. I've got a full playlist for AQA GCSE English language as well as functional skills, basic skills, essay writing, Harvard referencing, you name it, I'm doing it. And if I haven't done it yet, I will continue to create new videos for you. 
It really helps me out if you subscribe because it gives me more opportunity to create these videos. Thank you to everyone, to all my new subscribers and for your patience in waiting for me to upload some more videos. I'm Mrs. E and I'll see you soon.